Have you ever struggled to remember a math concept? Perhaps you've done all the homework, you've studied, you've, re you've read the book, but a key idea just seems to slip from your memory? Well, let me ask another question. For, for the adults in the audience, I'd like you to think back to your high school days. Can you still recall the quadratic formula from algebra class? The unit circle from trigonometry? The chain rule from calculus? Huh? <laughs> well, for the students taking these classes right now, are these ideas ingrained in your memory? Or <laughs> are they just fading from short-term memory? And for all of us, have we ever been in a learning situation where we found ourselves asking the question, why do I need to learn this? Yeah. <laughs> well, today as we ponder those questions, I'd like to discuss two main points. The power of multi-dimensional learning and the power of music as a learning and memorization tool. In fact, a little later, I'm going to ask us all to participate in a musical learning experience. <clears throat> and I hope my talk can inspire you to be a, a bit wary and maybe curious if you ever find yourself asking that question, why do I need to learn this? My name is Michael Bat Batista, and I'd like to share a little bit about my background to help you get to know me a little bit better. When I was a high school student, I remember looking at the graduation requirements at the time, and, and I saw that I only needed two years of math to graduate from high school. So I ran home and told my parents, I'm going to be done with math after next year. <laughs> and well, that plan didn't really work out because I'm now in my 11th year as a high school math teacher. <laughs> but my path to becoming a math teacher was not linear. In fact, in college, I, I took math classes out of requirement and eventually turned into interest but I actually majored in English. And after college, I decided to go to graduate school and pursue music, one of my lifelong passions. It was several, several years after graduate school that I decided to earn a teaching credential in math. <clears throat> now, I've shared this brief bio with, in many conversations throughout my life, and I often get somewhat puzzled and curious reactions. English, music, math. How did the dots line up? And I'm going to be quite honest with you. There were times when I was going through school that I was a bit perplexed at my own educational choices, especially when I saw some of my friends and relatives who were only studying one thing, and they seemed to have it all figured out. But I just wasn't like that. All I knew was that I loved to learn, I loved to problem solve, and I loved to be creative, and those traits eventually led me to a career as an educator. Well, fast forward into my teaching career, and there was a time when I was teaching pre-calculus. And in pre-calculus, students have a task of learning what's called the unit circle, as you can see from the slide. The unit circle is a fundamental concept of trigonometry. If you're learning this for the first time, it can seem a bit overwhelming, perhaps daunting. So I, I jumped in and I taught the logic of the unit circle. I taught, I taught how it worked. We played games. We did flashcards. We did, we did colors and we looked at patterns. And these techniques, they sort of worked. The students would pass the quizzes and do okay, but I noticed something curious. They would forget the material very fast. And I felt like we were in a cycle of Learn, forget, learn, forget. And this troubled me as a teacher. I wanted my students to remember the unit circle forever. So one day, I went home and said, I need to rethink my teaching strategies. So I picked up my guitar and said, what if I could create a song about the unit circle? And so I started sketching some ideas. And I brought it back to my class. And the song wasn't finished. I just, I just tested it with them. And something curious happened. I noticed their ears perked up, and they, they were really paying attention. And these were 
a group of kids who weren't necessarily very interested in math. And I got a lot of positive feedback from the students that day. And that inspired me. I thought, what if I made this unit circle song into a video that I could have the kids learn ahead of time? And then we could sing it together. So I'd like to share um, a short clip of this. I forgot the unit circle reams and degrees. I forgot to study and my A's went down to B's. I forgot the top half goes from zero out to pi. I forgot it all and that's no lie. Think it goes like pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, two pi over three, three pi over four, five pi over six pi. A radian's an angle and a radius is a line and if you study every day you'll do just fine. So the next year I taught free calculus, before diving in to the mathematical logic behind this, I just assigned the video to my students. And I, I think I assigned it on a Monday and said, be prepared to sing this in class on Friday. <laughs> Something magical happened. When Friday came around, I brought my guitar to the class and I could hear students singing the lyrics as they were coming into the classroom. And in class, we formed a circle. We had a, a, a fake campfire in the, in the center of the room. <laughs> and we sang several rounds of this song. And the majority of the students had the song memorized, which meant they had the unit circle memorized, which is exactly what I wanted them to do. And even the quiet kids, I could see them starting to open up and start to catch on. And that's when I knew I really wanted to use more music in my math classes as a teaching tool. Now, using music as a teaching tool, it's not a novel idea. I mean, we do this in preschool, in elementary school, and, and it works like magic. For example, if I were to ask you right now to memorize a set of 26 symbols and recite them back to me, that task would seem painful and perhaps strenuous. But our children do this with the alphabet song before they even learn how to speak and before they have a full understanding of what the alphabet really means. So could there be more opportunities for music in the higher grades in our classes? Well, I remember in my teaching credential program learning about something called Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. Howard Gardner is an American psychologist and Harvard professor, and he suggests that we can strengthen our learning of a topic by targeting different modes of learning. And as you can see from the slide, music is one of those modes of learning. So I'm gonna ask the question again for us to ponder. Could there be more opportunities for us to have musical learning experiences in classes in the higher grades? So I'd now like to take a little detour and introduce you to somebody very special to me. This is my daughter. Her name's Kira, and she's six years old. And like many kids her age, she loves to sing. And I'd like to share a story about Kira. So when Kira was a toddler, she, when she was four years old, I started to compose a song with a friend about the quadratic formula in algebra. The quadratic formula, like the unit circle, it stems from fundamental concepts in the algebra courses that we teach. So I would strum the song around the house on my guitar, I'd be singing the lyrics, and Kira would be minding her own business, just playing with her toys. And then one day, I'm driving in the car, and Kira's in the back seat, and she's sing singing quietly to herself. The farmer and the dell, the farmer and the dell. And out of the blue, note for note, word for word, she sings, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. <laughs> 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 
I, I think I nearly crashed the car at that point. I was so stunned. I looked at her and said, what did you just sing? And can you, can you do that again? And she could. And I knew, okay, I knew I had to capture this for our, our memories. So I recruited Kira to become my production assistant. And we put together, we put together this, this video about the quadratic formula. I'll show you a clip. So, as I mentioned, Kira's six years old now. She's in first grade. And she doesn't understand what the mathematical meaning behind the quadratic, quadratic formula is, but she can learn a song, and the song helped her remember that equation. And interestingly, this hasn't been a one-time occurrence for Kira. Since writing the quadratic formula song, I've been on a quest to write calculus jingles. And Kira surprises me every time. She learns them all. <laughs> and please don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that learning a song is a substitute for all the hard work and analysis and deep thought that we do in our math classes. That is absolute, that's necessary. But what I am saying is if music can help a child learn these high-level equations, then our high school students could surely find this helpful. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of my talk, I'd like us to try to learn some math. But I'm not going to give you a math lecture. I'm not going to ask you to open a textbook. And there's not going to be a quiz. But what we, what we are going to try is I'm all going to ask you to sing. <laughs> I think I see a few people in the back getting nervous. Whoa, look at the time. Got to go. Um, but we are going to use our voices to access the musical part of our minds. And like Kira, I'm going to have us all try to learn the quadratic formula. And disclaimer, I don't consider myself to be a singer. But like I said, we're going to use our voice to access the musical part of our minds. So, um, as I ask my students, can I have you please stand? Now, if, you, if it's been a while since you've taken algebra and you don't remember this, that's OK. We're just going to prime our minds with an idea. If you already know the quadratic formula, great. We're going to learn it from a different perspective. It's like a commercial jingle. We're going to get the ideas into our minds. OK? So um, I'm going to sing the whole phrase, what we're all going to learn, and then we're going to break it down into, into parts. And, and do a column response. So, so x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that's our goal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for the first phrase, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root Excellent. Let's do it again. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root. Just you. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root. Perfect. We'll do the second half. Of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Perfect. Let's do that again. Of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You guys are too good. All right. Let's try the whole thing. 1, 2, 
x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Again, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Just you. amazing you guys. I hope you guys sing that to your neighbors <laughs> or sing it around the campfire. <laughs> well, I'd like to leave you with a couple big picture takeaways. I encourage you to explore the power of music as a learning and memorization tool regardless of your age or musical background. Music has such a, an amazing way of strengthening our learning, helping us be present and building community. <clears throat> you can write songs, you can take lyrics to known songs and tweak them to fit the content, or if you're a teacher, just play music in your classroom of different styles to change up the energy in the room. Sometimes the concepts we learn just need to be spiced up with a bit of rhythm and melody. And if you're ever in a learning situation and you find yourself asking the age-old question, why do I need to learn this? Please be wary and curious. I know as a student, I used to ask that question all the time. And, and I didn't see how English, music, and math would eventually help me in countless ways, especially as a teacher. I never knew that I'd be able to combine the poetry of English with equations of math and melodies of music. I didn't see that connection until several years after I finished school. So please don't limit your learning. You don't have to be one thing. In fact, you never know when all the knowledge, experience, and education from your life will someday strike a chord for you and blend together in harmony. Thank you. Thank you.